Greetings, mortals! It is I, Yi Bagoon, here in Age of Mythology Retold to give you some first looks at the new scenario editor. If you're wondering how I'm releasing this video today, I've got to first of all start off by thanking World's Edge, who gave me an advanced copy of the game for the specific purpose of releasing this video. So, to jump in the editor, we click these three dots at the top here, select editor, and then we jump in. On first appearances, it's not going to look too impressive or too different really from the original Age editor. Icons, as you can see, are all the same. But don't be deceived, the editor does have a lot more new features, and I think we're going to get some really interesting custom maps for this game. So I'm just going to go through some really basic features in this video. Let's start off with painting terrain. You can see immediately that we've got a huge number of different terrains in Retold far more than the original game, so you can make very detailed biomes here. Same way to paint as before, you select your brush size with brush settings, you can choose varying shapes of brush, square, hollowed square, and adjust the size as needed. You can also use the number keys to enlarge the brush or change the shape of the brush. Left click and drag will paint your chosen terrain, right click doesn't do anything here unless you click on a terrain, in which case it will select the terrain. So if you wanted to paint over with an existing terrain, you could do that with left and right click. You can see that as there's so many different terrains here, it's going to be quite easy to build up very detailed biomes and scenery items, especially with the all these different mixes where you can just blend different terrains together really well. You'll notice that the terrains themselves are actually quite detailed and textured and this is really useful when we come to change the elevation of our terrain. Same as before, we can adjust the square and the speed and press and hold the left mouse button to increase the elevation, press and hold the right mouse button to decrease the elevation and you see that beautiful effect with the terrain we got there as I raised up the cliff terrain. So the textures really do flesh out and look fantastic, so I'm just thinking of all the amazing camera track cinematography and arts you'll be able to make with this game. There's a couple of other ways we can change terrain elevation. One of them is the sample elevation tool. With this one, what it does is you right click an area to select and then left click to paste, and you're just pasting elevation here rather than actual terrain itself as you can see. And if you want a nice gentle effect, you could go halfway down, and halfway down again, and halfway down again, and then you've got a more smoothed transition to your hill. Equally, you could select the base and just go over everything again and return it to normal height as we've done there. Another tool you'll be familiar with is the cliff tool. Again, we've got quite a few different cliffs to try. We can paint again with the left mouse button. Right mouse button here, you'll see it selects the height that we're painting rather than any other thing else. And we can change the height with the slider or by inputting free text. We've got a limit here of minus 15 for the lowest and plus 30 for the highest. It's a very good range. It's much more than the original game had. But with the elevation tool, you can actually go beyond and below these height limits. I'd just be a bit careful doing it, as once you do, you're going to end up with huge differences between your high ground and your low ground. And although it may be fantastic for a minor tool to throw someone off that cliff, it's not really going to be too great for gameplay. Going back to the cliff tool, we've got a few options with it. So what we can do is we can paint around the cliff, so I'm not just painting the top, I'm also painting the side. Um, they can be smoothing or it can just be this very sharp, jagged elevation with overhangs which doesn't really work too well if you're trying to create a realistic land. You can have embellishments as well, so we've got some shrubberies here, and again we can just do different layers of cliffs and build something up. You may note we've also got the smoothen tool from the original, and again that's very basic, it just works to smooth things out. 
Again, you can see the texture of the terrain changing quite significantly there. The roughen tool um, will just roughen the area. It's quite a blunt instrument, this one. It seems to just create these ridges in the ground. They can be smoothed out afterwards, but might be best to use elevation tools if you want to achieve a roughen effect rather than the actual roughen tool. We've also got some water as well. Again, we've got quite a large list of waters in the game. If I'm just going to start with Atlantean Sea, and you can see the water itself is a vast improvement over the original game. We've got these realistic waves coming in there. If you mix the bodies and you have rivers, then the waves lessen as you're moving out and they sort of follow the curvature of your water. So again, fantastic graphics. The team have really outdone themselves here because water must be so difficult for people to actually make and develop. You've also got the beautify water tool. Again, you can beautify and just paint around it. You can actually select a different type of water and update it to change it. And you can also remove it altogether. You'll find that if you do that, the elevation remains unchanged, so you could just use this sample elevation tool to paint over if you're making a mistake there. We've got shallow water as well, so units can traverse that one as well as ships. So all looking very interesting. We also have the forest tool. Again, we've got a lovely large list of forests for various biomes and you can decide how dense you want your trees to be and how dense you want your sort of grass embellishments to be. So if I go with nothing, I'm just essentially painting terrain. Underbrush is the sort of shrubbery plants that you get and trees quite obvious there. So again you can make some fantastic forest clearings very easily. If you're selecting a different type of forest, you will paint over your existing forest and terrain when you're doing that. And again, there's a lot of really nice tree graphics here when you zoom in on there and you see no details lost. In fact, it's actually gained, as you can see, the individual leaves. Whereas when you zoom out, you've still got a lot of detail. You're not going to see every individual leaf if it won't render, but uh, certainly a fantastic HD remake of the game we all know and love. Moving on to units, again we've got a good unit list. We've had a bit of a reordering, so every sort of special effect is now prefixed with VFX for visual effects. So you can see here the Heaven Knight sort of effect that you might have seen in the promotions coming down. If I'm just going to play something, you can also type up top if you wanted to narrow things down. So you could place a lot of columns that way, as I've just done there. There are loads of embellishment objects in this game. You can choose to sort by culture and by type. So if I just go for embellishments and ignore the visual effects, you can just see there's so much there. Um, it's canopic jars, bricks, pots, barrels, and vases, and you can see again, once you zoom in on these, huge amount of detail there. You can even see some runes on that canopic jar there. So really well done. Some tools from the old game have still made it through, so you can align to the grid, and you can view the terrain grid. If you go to the view button, that's going to help with aligning your things. You can also position objects manually by spinning the mouse wheel to rotate them or moving them like that. What's new and what's really exciting for me is this thing here called the Advanced Transformation Tool. This opens the console here. If you click Enable Gizmo, it enables you to precisely change a lot of properties of your object. So you can see here, I can move my objects quite freely. I can move it in certain planes, and if I check this button, I can make it fly by moving it in the Y plane. So if I play something underneath it, I've now stacked those columns quite easily. If you wanted to be a bit more precise with your movements, because you can see at the moment it's pretty difficult to get these things to line up, 
then what you can do is enable snapping. What this does, it means things will move, but only by whole integers that you specify. So I'm going to move that one there. I can align these later. So if I align them both now, to the grid, and then snapping enabled, I move up in integers when I'm making something fly. So I can, again, very quickly and neatly align things. Interestingly, you can also copy and paste units. The height isn't always preserved when you do this, but some other unit properties are. So if we go back into the advanced transformation tool, you can change the position to change how far out everything's going to snap. So again, that would go up in multiples of five rather than one. So you can be very precise there. You can also rotate an object in all sorts of different planes. So you could even make it go upside down. So 180 degrees exactly because I've snapped it. Then I could go back to position and bring it up. And then I've got an upside down column. And then I could move this one and put that one up. And then I've got a really nice aligned column that looks like that. You'll see that scale is also an option. So again, I can make things bigger or smaller in different planes. So I can make things very long, very wide, or just very big. So this one's quite small, but if I put it in the Y plane to 2.5, then I've just got an enlarged column. Equally, same thing in reverse. You can make things thin, you can make things small. So that's really good. As I said, copy and pasting. Once you copy units, some of their properties are preserved. Again, it's not going to apply to everything, but the vast majority of things can be copied very well. So these columns that have been perfectly scaled are exactly the same height. And if you're aligning these, you can zoom in and see how perfectly well they are aligned. So I think we can create some fantastic scenery and eye candy with this trick. It's very exciting. I'm going to write a guide on that and publish that on Asian Mythology Heaven on how to use the Advanced Transform tool. That's mostly it for what I wanted to show people today. The other terrain option I wanted to briefly cover is terrain copy and paste. You might be familiar with this in the old game version, so you can select an area and control C, and then you can just paste that same area again, or flip it around 90 degrees. And that tool actually seems to work a lot better than the original. Triggers which are going to need another video. The triggers seem to be high priority by default, which is an excellent change. And you'll see we've got triggers organized by how they are and what sort of action they perform. So all the core power triggers are grouped, all the objective triggers are grouped, all the modify triggers are grouped. There's a lot of interesting triggers in here. You can also search for them and you can actually change the icons of various god powers and units which is going to be really exciting so we can get custom god powers we can get units with silly icons and silly names doing all sorts of wonderful stuff that concludes our first looks at the scenarios so i hope you're excited for retold as i am thank you again to world's edge for giving me an early access copy of the game from which to do this video preview. I'm going to link to some AOM Heaven guides in the description, and if you want to learn more about the editor, you can head there. You can have a look at some more videos on my channel, or if you even fancy designing some art, we're going to be restarting the continuous screenshot competition, so really looking forward to seeing what everyone can produce in this editor. I will leave that there for today. AOM Retold's out very soon. You've got the early access coming out on Wednesday the 28th of August. The full game follows on Wednesday the 4th of September. I'm sure you will all find it a job well done, very faithful to the original, and look forward to seeing what else you can create when you get your hands on this. Bye for now.